When we work out, we want to get the most out of our time spent training. I recently designed a new program that's about a year long where we do full body resistance training three times a week. Now, as with all of my training programs, they can be broken down into different stages or phases. Today, we'll be focusing on one of these phases where I program squats first in each of my workouts. During this time, I have an A and B workout that alternate each training session. Now, I'll be going on vacation in a few weeks, and as long as they let me film in their gym, I'm planning on filming one of these workouts while I'm there. Now, there are some pretty obvious reasons why we should do squats first, and we'll be going over those, but there are also quite a few reasons you might not have thought of. And if you're one of those who really only cares about building up your upper body, we'll look at a couple of studies that have shown how we can use our lower body training to increase the rate of upper body hypertrophy and overall muscle growth. I'm using two different types of squats at the beginning of each workout. Because I primarily train with dumbbells, I do suitcase squats in workout A and front squats in workout B. Alternatively, you could do a back squat in workout A and a goblet squat in workout B. The front squat has some unique advantages as it can help to improve your whole body posture by putting you in thoracic extension, counteracting the slouching that happens when we sit at our desk all day or when we're looking down at our phones. This more upright body posture also takes some pressure off our lower back and knees, putting the load right on our quads where we want it, as this is a more quad dominant exercise than a back or suitcase squat. Squats are a functional movement that strengthens the muscles we use when we sit down, stand up, pick an object off the floor, or go for a walk or a run. Squats work a large amount of muscles, including the quads, hamstrings, glutes, calves, and core. If you're doing suitcase squats, you can add delts, traps, and grip strength. Because of this, it does a number of things in our body. One is it gives us a higher calorie burn during our workout. And because squats work more muscles, it builds more muscle. And new muscle burns calories, extra calories, even when we're at rest increasing our basal metabolic rate. The other thing leg training does, and in particular squats, is it boosts our testosterone and growth hormone levels. Now a lot of people feel this temporary spike in growth hormone or testosterone doesn't do anything for our bodies. But they did a fun study where they had nine men perform arm exercises, training their left arm two days a week by itself, and then they would train their right arm on two different days of the week right after training legs. After 11 weeks, the right arm was substantially bigger and stronger than the left arm. Because the researchers found significantly higher levels of growth hormone and testosterone during the leg plus arm training sessions, they concluded this is what caused the superior growth and strength in the right arm. But testosterone and growth hormone aren't the only hormones leg training affects. I'm sure you've heard of myostatin and folostatin. Myostatin limits muscle growth in humans and really all animals. Now there are animals with a myostatin deficiency. I'll put up a picture here of a whippet with the deficiency beside one that doesn't have it and you can see right away why this hormone interests researchers looking into muscle growth. Now folostatin inhibits myostatin. So when folostatin is high, myostatin is low putting us in a much better state to build muscle. And you might have guessed it, resistance training increases folostatin. They did a study on middle-aged men between the ages of 40 and 53 because as you know, you can get fit and build muscle at any age. And this is one of the studies that proves it. And what they did is they took these men and split them into three groups. One group trained only their upper bodies. The second group only trained their lower bodies with the third and final group doing full body training. All three groups trained three times a week for eight weeks. What they found was while all three groups built muscle and there was some improvement of the ratio of folostatin to myostatin in the upper body and lower body groups, the full body group saw almost twice the endocrine response of folostatin with a reduction of myostatin, which researchers concluded was a result of the overall amount of muscle mass being activated during training. 
and no better way to activate a large amount of muscle mass than squats. So keep this in mind for your next workout so you can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.